Keir Starmer put his personal ambition ahead of our country's national interest. But for the Labour Party, this is a very difficult bill. It's election day in the UK and all the major players have cast their ballots. There's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, leader of the UK Conservative Party, or the Tories as they're called. He was seen out and about early in the day. He voted in his constituency in Northern England. Then there was Sunak's chief rival, the Labour Party leader, Keir Starmer. Starmer voted in London, the British capital, the city he hopes to rule from in the coming days. And by the looks of it, Londoners want him too, or at least they want the Conservatives out. At this point, it doesn't even matter, but I mean, the Labour obviously predicted to win. Personally, I prefer the Greens, but the, the Conservatives have got to go. I think a bit more stability. Um, fewer of these, uh, I don't know, dirty politics from the Tories. So hopefully things get cleaned up a little bit, but I think it's uh, you know, time for a change. The Conservatives or Tories have ruled for 14 years. The UK has seen five prime ministers in this time, a botched Brexit and a brutal cost of living crisis. So you can understand why the British people want a change. This next voter sums it up. Yeah, I'm voting Labour. Um, it's actually a new constituency, so I think probably it is going to go Labour. Um, I've been a Labour voter basically since I could vote. Um, I'm feeling excited. Um, I feel like it can only get better, right? <laughs> That is the sentiment that Rishi Sunak is up against. That is why he is predicted to lose. Opinion polls have been against the Tories for months. Ever since Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister in 2022, he took over after the party had imploded thanks to his predecessors. Sunak's immediate predecessor was Liz Truss, who resigned on her 50th day in office. But not before causing an e economic meltdown thanks to her half-baked budget. This ruined the Conservative Party's reputation for fiscal prudence. Before Truss, there was Boris Johnson, who arguably did more damage to Tory credibility. He hosted parties at 10 Downing Street during COVID while people were forced to stay away from their dying relatives. The scandal was dubbed Party Gate and it led to Boris's ouster. The Conservative Party's image sank with him. So because of these major scandals, the Tories became extremely unpopular even before Sunak took the help. Since he's been on, in office, the Tories have been trailing in opinion polls and their popularity has not increased no matter what he's tried. So it seems he had enough. And he called for an early election. Sunak could have waited till the end of this year, but perhaps he thought it was better to get the sack on a warm day in July. Right now, his focus is not to win. It is to end up in second place, ahead of an unexpected rival. This man, Nigel Farage, he was spotted earlier today enjoying an ice cream at a seaside resort. Farage leads the Reform, the Reform UK party. It's considered far right. And a lot of traditional Tory voters are switching to Reform. So Sunak will be hoping that he ends the day ahead of Farage. Of course, these are just the party leaders. The result does not depend on just them. They are also the ordinary candidates vying for a chance to become members of parliament. And one thing stands out in this election. It's how diverse the candidates are. The next British Parliament is expected to be the most diverse in history. More than 80 ethnic minority MPs are expected this time around, up from 65 in the last Parliament. Every party is banking on their diverse candidates, even a far-right party like Reform. They may have a different motive for this. But whatever the reason, one thing is quite certain. No matter who wins this election, it will be the most inclusive in British history, with or without a British Indian at the helm. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished.
Welcome to First Call of America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital of Washington, D.C.